Although there's no image provided for this occasion, I managed to find another area of noble-worthy offices, crypts, and bedrooms, all connected and vacant. I've assigned everyone their things, and for once, the nobility isn't complaining! Except the Countess, who's whining that her crypt of gold statues and glass doors isn't pretty enough. However, I must question one thing. How long has this damn place been forgotten? In a few other rooms, fully clothed dwarf skeletons were found in their beds. The nobles seem happy to sweep the bony corpses out of bed and then just sleep there themselves, though. Creepy-ass nobles. Suddenly I got word that the previous overseer, Uncle Jam, has bled to death. I search outside for his corpse, assuming that he's been mauled by one of the shambling monstrosities we call wildlife here. However, I find the corpse slumped against a wall in the hallway in a pool of blood. I'm suspecting foul play, to be honest. It's a good thing you can't really assassinate a dead guy. But then again, I'm starting to wonder about something. The mangled war dogs in that hidden room, the weird, open area that Tag Plastic was in, that never seems to exist. The mysteriously wounded guards and slightly maimed peasants. Is there something, something evil lurking in head shoots that we don't know about? White Cloak Nishi Seth, Hearth Lord, has imposed a ban on certain exports. Oh, let me guess. The export of bucklers has been prohibited. Yep. He really wants his fucking bucklers, it seems. This guy has a hill of bucklers in his room, and he dives around in them for fun. I guess that explains the bruises. In closing, summer has been more of the same. Fire, death, and retarded design. As the weather cools outside to make that transition from hellishly hot to bitter grave cold, I think to myself about the creation I was supposed to The enemy is upon us! A vile force of darkness has arrived! Oh. Well, fuck. Snowdub Nogospungu Goblin has returned. Scouts report that it's a war party, led by the local leader of the goblin force, Snowdube, a master marksman with a crossbow, and an army of well-trained rustlers. From the north, a goblin guard and a group of goblin crossbowmen. I don't need to tell you how dangerous those marksmen are. They can nail a dwarf in the throat from a mile away. Wait, why aren't they advancing? Oh, oh, right. The lava pool outside our entrance. Turns out the goblins took one look at the surrounding scenery and the giant tribute weapon leaking lava all over the place, and now they're huddling together, fearfully, in little camps at our borders. These guys serve demons half the time and they're afraid of head shoots. That's, uh, that's really saying a lot about this place. Suddenly, a cobalt thief is spotted near the lava flow by one of our on-duty champions, Holistic Detective. The cobalt makes a run for it and, uh, wait. What the hell is he? I leave you with this final shot for summer of holistic detective charging through a lake of fucking lava to maul a cobalt beyond recognition. He survives without a scratch. Remind me to never ever piss off our military. It seems that holistic detectives lava immunity was due to a full suit of well-made adamantine plate mail, with the chest piece being a legendary work engraved with the defeat of Lance Lantern on the front. Even while spattered with vomit, blood, and booze, it looks pretty awesome. We can only hope it will stand up to goblin crossbow bolts, should they eventually advance. Oddly enough, nobody has bothered to bury Uncle Jam. He's rotting in the hallway, and it's really starting to smell. However, despite the miasma, nobody seems willing to haul his maggot-infested carcass to the crypts. I figured they would be more respectful of the guy who made Tribute Weapon, though given what it's currently doing, I can kind of understand. White Cloak Nishiseth, Hearth Lord, has been re-elected. White Cloak was re-elected as mayor on the Make Me More Bucklers platform. In celebration, he bought an entire store and filled it with bucklers. 
The Belgian Melbille Cotton mechanic cancels construct building. Item blocking site. Said building was Uncle Jam's coffin. The Belgian dragged it to the forgotten subtunnels under the fortress and left it there. I really, really wonder what this guy did to piss everyone off so bad. Meanwhile! Oh god, what the hell was that? S some kind of rotten goat thing! Oh shit. Oh fuck. Whose fucking idea was this? Who the hell wanted us to come out here? No, oh, no. There's more of them. It's a rain and lava and everything smells like death. I want to go home. Back in the fortress. Thief, protect the horde from skulking filth. Oh, come on. Is he really going to try this after what just happened to the last kobold? Why, yes. Yes, he is. This little idiot ran into a room full of champion soldiers, only to come flying back out the door seconds later, in five pieces. Frog is still lightly injured, and has a new injury to their lower spine. Oh man, while I was busy watching the troops rip the kobold limb from limb, turns out whatever broke Frog's hand, and earlier leg, in the first place, came back and broke his spine. I don't think he's getting out of that bed anytime soon. Suddenly, a previously unseen squad of goblin lashers and wrestlers charge the fort with a horrible war cry. Where did these guys come from? A small gap in the lava pool formed, providing safe passage across. Now, now is the time. Attack! The carnage is indescribable. Once the wrestlers charged into the group, their war cry became screams of pain. Organs, limbs, heads, and more flew from the battle. What's even more impressive is that most of the soldiers here don't even carry weapons. They're literally tearing them apart with their bare hands. Why, one unlucky goblin took a direct uppercut to the chin during the fight. He proceeded to zip across the sky and fly nearly three screens diagonally from the battle before he met the ground with a loud, fatal crunch. Juden Hauer Ruhlnisch fortress Nazi, is taken by a fey mood. The first battle won, we decided to take it easy again for a bit, and let the goblins just deal with the rotting fiends outside. Then, suddenly, Judenhauer begins to scream at us in an incomprehensible language, charging down the halls, shouting about his furrier or furrier or, or something like that. He claimed a workshop and then began to demand silk. Manuel Calavera agrees to help make the needed spider silk. However, grab spider webs no more than two rooms away, translated to run down a long hallway into a room full of gears, shafts, and lava, then up the stairs towards the goblins in his mind. He's quickly killed by a bolt to the throat, and the goblins discover a back entrance to the fort. The military, thankfully, arrives in time. The goblins are led by a guard whose full title seems to be The Fright. He suddenly began a large monologue about the unwinnable war and how Manuel was only the first of many casualties. He then began to leap around shouting, The Fright! Uh, so much that one of the dwarves tore out his lungs in a rage. Inexplicably, he proceeded to explode after death, destroying his corpse. The gore was spread over multiple floors, Besides Manuel, no casualties were reported. One dwarf's spine was lightly scratched, but he's expected to recover. Manuel will be given a small tomb for his help during the headshoots divide. His death also caused the other weavers to wise up and gather the easy-to-get webs. Soon, Judenhauer was able to begin work on whatever he's decided to build. I still can't understand him. A wall has been engraved with Idash Libad, the Moist Praises. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a goblin and a dwarf by Dusim Onul Zuglar. The goblin is making a plaintive gesture. The dwarf is laughing. While waiting for our latest artifact to be done, I decided to check out some of our fort's artwork, which is usually engraved right into the walls and floor. At first it starts out pretty awesome, goblins being slaughtered by dwarves. Merceth Dustik, the lucky steed. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf and a dwarf by Broken Box Olint Dune. The dwarf is striking down the dwarf. 
then things get kind of creepy. Hastily carved images of dwarves murdering dwarves in a berserk frenzy, the carvings themselves often blood-stained. Sulusi Theb, the craterous grub. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf by Broken Box Olinitun. The dwarf is engraving. And then, rather anticlimactically, there are many, many, many carvings of dwarves carving themselves carving. Seriously, 90% of the forts engravings are this. Couldn't we have something better, like more goblin death? Speaking of death, various dwarves have been claiming the goblins' armor and weapons. They aren't afraid to do a little lava hopscotch and quickly move between the randomly changing areas of solid floor between the main gate and the outside. Instead, I had an alternate passage built. Now the dwarves can take a ramp up to the cliffs and then back down on the other side of the wall. Call it wimpy, but I'd prefer it to burning, screaming dwarves setting everything ablaze. An artifact has been constructed. Misho Sotik. Beach scene. A dolomite bed. This is a dolomite bed. All Kraft's dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with dolomite and encircled with bands of cave spider silk and demon bone. The object is adorned with hanging rings of tower cap and menaces with spikes of cave spider silk. Judenhauer finishes his creation. That's... Wow, a bed made out of stone. That must be uncomfortable. Still, this is the most metal bed I've ever seen. The thing is covered with spider webs and the bones of slain demons. I have added it to his quarters since he's the one who made it. That still doesn't stop him from giving me nasty looks every time he passed me in the hall. An engraving. Femnol Dozeb, the inconvenient fruit. Engraved on the floor is a image of four pointed stars by Brute Force Erith Zokun. Something about an engraving in my tomb or something, I don't know. Also, we have barrels of raw fish and plenty of fishermen, but no fishery. I quickly fixed this problem and got one of our more useless dwarves on fish cleaning duty. I mean, really, who prides themselves on being a good potash maker? Also, it turns out for some dumb reason I'm not allowed to award tombs posthumously. Instead, I gave the tomb to Holistic for that lava waiting stunt. Once he's dead and buried within, it's going to be flooded. With lava. A human diplomat from Mongdur has arrived. Turns out this guy showed up outside. No caravan, no guards, hell, not even a squire. The guy just shows up alone and begins Booking it across the dead landscape, screaming like a little ninny the entire time. It worked, at least. He did manage to make it to the relative safety of head shoots to hold diplomatic discussions. Although, the guy's name is freaking Ishkak Burn Partner. How the hell do you trust a guy who's named Burn Partner? That just gives bad vibes. Oh, and there's the human caravan. I guess the diplomat got excited and ran ahead or something though he ran in from the west border, not the east, where the caravan appeared. The Countess Ficod Keithy Nerith meets with the human diplomat Iskak Istros. It's such a pleasant place you've carved out for yourselves. Oh, cut the sarcasm already, you dick. Meanwhile, White Cloak meets the caravan at the new lava and riverside trade depot. Bunch of goblin junk and aluminum crafts are traded for a ton of meat, booze, fish, plants, cheese, and some pretty damn good steel armor. At last, my tomb is finished. I mean, really, guys, you just kind of dumped me into a mass grave place after I got my head bit off. That's a bit of a dick move. Weren't my awesome hauling skills enough to warrant a tomb of my own? Oh, well, my new tomb more than makes up for it. Two pure silver statues and silver columns leading up to a solid gold sarcophagus. Yeah, that creation from the afterlife stuff, total BS, by the way. I, I just wanted you guys to make me a badass tomb. The Belgian Melville Cotton, mechanic, has given birth to a boy. Also, congratulations to Miss Belgian, although the father is crackmaster, it seems. 
make sure to keep him away from his cabinet and boots. I have also found out the reason behind Uncle Jam's death. It seems that at some point a mandate went unfinished, probably that clear glass one earlier, come to think of it. Anyways, in retaliation, Olesh had the hammerer reduce Jam's head to a fine... jam. Tremendous Majestic Etzeson, peasant, has given birth to a boy. Sheesh, another one? I guess it's repopulation time or something. I've come to realize something, actually. This overseer thing, it's a pain. Yeah, I'm having fun ordering people around, scaring small children by threatening to eat their brains and living in a royal bedroom, but it's a huge problem. Everyone expects you to solve every little issue they have. Have you ever had a headache when your head isn't even attached? It's a real bitch. Orange Soda Luslem Lolar has become a legendary champion. All hail Orange Soda Luslem Lolor! I've been inducted into the fortress's champions, you see. I plan to retire now to the military and spend my undeath fighting and killing. You know, though, I could have it all. I could keep the luxuries, the power, the status of leader. All it would take would be more effort and patience with the problems every overseer faces. Nah, screw it. 